Welcome back everybody. Today I have another sample snippets video for you. I don't have a lot of time to film or edit today so I'm going to try my best to keep this very succinct and to not prattle on like I normally do. And yeah let's get started. I have a handful of samples here of things that I have tested out over the past few months or possibly even into last year and I thought I would share my thoughts with you. Okay, so the first one, I don't actually have the sample with me, <laughs> funnily enough. I think I may have sent it to somebody else, uh, and that's okay because I did make extensive notes on it, and I do remember how it smells. I certainly remember I had a massive change of heart with it, so I'm happy to share that with you. And of course, now the light's gonna change. This is the problem with filming in the afternoon. The fragrance I'm speaking of is Rose de Jamal by Les Indemodables. This house, honestly, I, there are so many great fragrances this house has put out and I don't own any of them yet. And uh, there are a couple on my wish list for sure. Uh, I'm still trying to work out which one though. But Rose de Jamal was a really interesting one to me because the first time I, that I tried it, I didn't think that it was particularly rosy. I got more resins and woods and spices. And it wasn't until I tried it a few months later that I realized there is definitely a very hefty rose component to that fragrance. And spoiler alert, I really liked it. So the second time that I tried it, at first when I sprayed it on, I definitely got a rosiness to it. And it was sort of a darkish rose. I wouldn't say like a... A super super dark rose but there was definitely some depth and some moodiness to it uh, it was quite velvety too if I remember correctly but there was also this element of soapiness to it which kind of lifted it a little bit and I don't know where the soapiness came from I think I at some point was wondering if it had neroli in it because it just had that sort of green soapiness. But it was also quite green just generally and the, there was a sweetness to it. I wouldn't necessarily classify that sweetness as coming from the rose per se. And if it did, then I definitely wouldn't consider the rose to be a jammy rose. So that, I, that doesn't really help you with how it smelled, but it definitely helps you to eliminate certain elements that you might be thinking about if I said sweet rose. So if the sweetness was coming from the rose, it certainly didn't feel like the type of sweetness you get from rose when you buy, say, a more commercial type of fragrance, a more mass-produced, crowd-pleasing type of fragrance. It almost felt a little bit essential oil-like. It felt very natural and very untampered with and also a little bit earthy as well and from that perspective I would say the earthiness didn't smell like dirt necessarily it didn't smell dirty um, but at the same time it didn't have that element of lightness and brightness that you get from a mass-produced crowd-pleasing type of rose fragrance. As I mentioned, there's definitely a, a bit of darkness to this fragrance. It has quite a hefty resinous, spiciness and woodiness to it. So hence why the first time I tried it, I, I didn't really discern the rose that much compared to those other elements. And it wasn't until I became a little bit more familiar with it that I really could pick out the rose straight away and to me the rose just jumped out after that but it did take a while for me to get that and sometimes that happens with me and florals too I might add when I first smell a fragrance and I'm not familiar with it if there is a really strong woody spicy component to it those are the notes that I tend to figure out first and then the more floral elements don't come until later. So when I first tried this fragrance I was thinking to myself that this really formidable rose element really combined with this green element that was also going through it I wasn't sure if it would be too much for me because as a fragrance it does carry a lot of weight you know it's not a light easy breezy type of fragrance to spray on even though I said there was Kind of a soapy element to it that I discerned in the opening. Uh, there was definitely a, a lot of weight, a lot of depth to this fragrance and I don't think it's something that I could just pick up and wear any old time. After a while, uh, maybe a couple of hours in, I started to detect a mintiness to it 
which I thought was interesting. It definitely helped to freshen the fragrance, uh, maybe impart a little bit of lightness in amongst all of these sort of heavy hitting, sort of dark moody elements. I have to say that it was at this point during that first wear when I wasn't sure if this fragrance was one that I would like enough to buy a full bottle of and that's because you know I had a moment with mint in fragrances a few years ago but I seem to have moved away from it and it's not really an element in a fragrance that I seek out even in the hot weather. That said I also did like the rose note in here. It seemed very natural and sort of earthy and grounded and kind of dusty but at the same time it was also very elegant and then we get to sort of the post three hour mark in the wear and my opinion just completely flipped so where I was on the fence prior about liking this fragrance or thinking I could wear this uh, in the dry down it just it really really blossomed and I absolutely loved it. In the dry down I got more of that sort of soapy element to the florals, a hint of greenness and then just a touch of a smoky resin and oh it really just developed into something really spectacular and unique you know this isn't a fragrance that I feel like I've smelled something similar before. Anyway so overall it kind of had this because of this earthiness to the rose and maybe the green elements in there, it had this really natural perfumery feel to it, even though it's not a natural perfume, at least not 100% natural perfume. Les Demodable definitely use synthetics, um, but they've obviously worked out sort of the perfect balance between natural versus synthetic elements to just really help those natural notes to sing more. Um, but then also still feel very natural and of the earth, you know, it was just stunning fragrance. Okay, next up we have a powerhouse fragrance. This is Hibiscus Mahajad by Maison Crivelli. Whew, this is so strong. <laughs> It's such a strong fragrance. My first, my very first impression when I spray this on a strip or on my skin, I did wear it on skin as well, is that it smells like a fruity, a really strong fruity cocktail. Hello Fritz. <laughs> Poppy's away today. Uh, we're heading off to a conference this week. So she's gone up to my friend Rob's place to spend some time at the farm and um, have some holiday time herself. So when I first smell this, I get a really strong fruity drink. And I don't mean, and I don't mean a cocktail either. I mean like a really strong fruit juice, maybe a concentrated fruit juice. And it's a fruit juice that's really clear and sweet and fresh maybe has a combination of pineapple and grapefruit in it or something definitely sort of a a tropical bent to it but not overly sweet or cloying and it's sort of a clarified fruitiness not a fleshy sort of fruitiness but as it sort of starts to dry down as it starts to dry down, I start to get more of maybe a cocktail vibe to this fragrance. Like it maybe has a rum in it or something. There is like a really plush, full bodied, velvety softness to this. And I think that's probably coming from florals. And I wonder if there's rose in this, but I think there's probably a bunch of other florals in here as well. But I can't really detect necessarily what florals they might be because that fruitiness in the opening just really kind of overrides everything else. There is a slight hint of tartness to this, but not, not in a citrus fruit sour sort of tartness kind of way. It's more like the crispness and tartness that you would get from a fruit tea note. So I'm wondering if it's the tea in here that's doing that, but it doesn't really resonate with me as being a tea fragrance. There is a leather and musk combination in here as well. And I don't think that it is entirely clean. So it's quite an interesting combination because you've got this really strong fruity opening that also has a bit of a depth to it. So it doesn't feel too young or too frivolous 
but then you've also got this leathery musk in the in there as well which I remember on skin definitely gave me a bit of an eau de armpit type of bent to it but not it wasn't totally noticeable and it was only noticeable if I you know really sniffed the fragrance on my skin up close it wasn't sort of sort of sitting there in the sillage or anything overall i didn't think that this impacted on my overall enjoyment of the fragrance but uh, there was about an hour there in during the development when it was on my skin that i definitely felt like it was a little bit too much for me and it wasn't it was challenging for me to smell that and then after that it sort of developed into this really beautiful sort of suede soft undertone to these sort of floral juicy elements and it was really quite addictive my only problem with this fragrance particularly when i put it on skin was that it gave me a raging headache because it is very very strong uh, and i was only sampling it so i was only putting one or two sprays on my arm and that was it that's just something to be mindful of that's obviously something that's very personal to me it's not going to give everybody a headache but it's just something to be aware of um, for yourself and for wearing it around other people I suppose it just it just is a very strong fragrance there's no doubt about it so my overall conclusion on this fragrance is that I really enjoyed it and for a fruity type of fragrance I actually found it to be very interesting and not young or frivolous or juvenile at all but it unfortunately was headache inducing for me so it's not going to be something that I'm going to rush out and pick up but I know that a lot of people love this fragrance so so I can understand why people love this one it is very very addictive so I know I forgot to do the the ranking for the Rose de Jamal uh, but for this one I would say for enjoyment I would give, give it two and a half stars just because it obviously gave me a headache performance five out of five its projection and longevity is astounding and it is a very strong fragrance and for uniqueness I would say this is not your typical fruity floral that leather and musk combination really do give it a very interesting twist and also a slightly animalic tone so I think four four out of five for uniqueness for this one all in all I think a lot of people would like this fragrance and I think that seems to be the general consensus if I if the ratings on Instagram and YouTube are something to go by. I think if you like this fragrance, you're probably gonna be somebody who likes the more bombastic end of the perfume realm. It's big, bold, sweet, and sexy, but unfortunately, if you are prone to headaches, you may wanna give this one a miss. The next one we have, I actually have a travel spray of it, and this is called Dark Vanilla, and it's by Urban Scents. This one opens very fresh, almost aromatic, and sort of piney to me. It's a little bit astringent, quite dry smelling, and there's something that's sort of cherry-like a little bit about it, but definitely don't get it in your head that this is like a cherry fragrance. It's not. It's just more that there's just this slight hint of something that might be cherry in it. That element only really lasts for a few seconds, and then it sort of turns a bit woody, so... I'd be inclined to think that it, perhaps it's not an actual cherry note that's in here. It then turns a little bit resinous, which I do like, and then it gets more and more powdery as it dries down. And there's also an element, there's also definitely an element of a spicy, woody, peppery kind of nuance to this fragrance, which I really, really enjoy. So what's interesting about this fragrance to me is that after about sort of the half hour mark for me, it starts to develop um, a bit of a hay note and I, there is a hay note in this fragrance but it's not the sort of golden bright hay note that you get in a lot of other fragrances that have a hay note this is definitely darker than that but as someone who grew up around hay as a child I can definitely detect a hay-like feel to it. That said, I also wouldn't consider this to be a particularly dark fragrance either. I think it's really well balanced between those darker, spicier, resinous notes and you know this sort of light, 
fresher, drier hay element to it. This fragrance, I believe when I did some reading up on it, was meant to be a tribute to bourbon vanilla. I definitely get the vanilla in here. It's not sweet though it's not super sweet there is a sweetness to it but it's it's a very um natural kind of smelling vanilla to me and it does have a bit of a boozy element to it what apparently there is a rum note in here and what i really like about it is that they haven't overdone it they haven't tried to make this into a super boozy uber sticky kind of fragrance there is a booze, as I mentioned, there's a booziness to it, but it's very well balanced and kind of subtle. There is enough in there to add a little bit of color and mystery to it, but without me feeling like someone's just dumped a bottle of bourbon over the top of my head. The dry down of this is definitely powdery and balsamic. And I think one of the reasons I might like it is that for me, it does remind me a little bit of Shalimar. Imagine the dry down of Shalimar with that lovely, fluffy, powdery vanilla, but without the more animalic, leathery tones, which have been replaced by sort of a woody, boozy element. That's sort of what this feels like to me. And I would also argue that this is a little bit of a masculine leaning fragrance. It also feels quite formal, so it's casual enough to be worn any time but at the same time I think it would fit really well into a more formal setting if you're wearing a suit or something so as for the ratings um, I would give this uh, performance wise I would probably give this about a two and a half it does die down really quickly on my skin I would say I probably get maybe an hour to two hours out of this before I have to literally lift my arm to my nose to smell the fragrance with that said, I have been experiencing really dry skin lately, so, so that could probably be a factor as well. Uniqueness, I give this a three and a half out of five. Overall, I'd say there are some really unique elements to this fragrance, but the that powdery vanillic dry down does have a lot of familiarity to it. Enjoyment wise, I think I would give it a three and a half out of five. I really loved the mid and the dry down for this, but I found the opening, particularly when I put it on skin, just felt a little bit sharp and piercing. So I think um, I definitely prefer the mid and the dry down on this fragrance. But thankfully the dry down period is very fast. So I really only had to wait maybe 20 minutes to get there. Overall, I really enjoy this fragrance. Like I said, it's sort of an aromatic, masculine leaning, powdery vanilla that has a bit of a dark edge to it. It's definitely worth checking out. I think if you're looking for a vanilla that isn't too sweet and isn't too feminine. Next up, I have a sample of Dama Bianca from Zerzhov. This one gets a lot of love. So I was very curious to try it. So this to me opens like a very creamy, fleshy sweet fruit think of an orange colored fruit not a citrusy orange but like a fleshy orange fruit like a really overripe nectarine or peach and you bite into it and the juice just runs down your face that's kind of what i get from this uh, I feel like there's a bit of a boozy note in here as well, but that could also be the almondy notes in here. I think there is an almond meant to be a, some kind of almond base in here, and I definitely get that. And it's almost powdery too, but it doesn't quite step into the powdery realm. I think it still sits squarely more in the creamy range. I feel like there is just a hint of dryness and powderiness there. It's nice. I mean, I feel like I get... I can definitely see some similarities to fragrances like Casimir and Ylang in Gold by Mikalev. But this one, as far as I can remember of the other ones, this one feels like it would be less sweet than they are. The problem I think that I have with this is I feel like to me, I, I don't really enjoy that almond element combined with this sort of boozy fruitiness. And this booziness sometimes come off as really overripe fruit that is starting to turn or maybe even a booziness that is leaning chocolatey i think that's where i sort of get the powderiness from yeah there's just something about this that i, I actually don't enjoy at all again sorry zerzhov but 
still another fail for me I just I can't wear that I can't put it on my skin I did try putting it on my skin and I did regret it unfortunately but uh, but again I think if you like fragrances like Casimir or Langan Gold you may like this one because it feels like a much a slightly darker more boozy less sweet version of those fragrances to me all right so enjoyment wise I think I would give this maybe a three and a half possibly less actually maybe a two and a half because Today, when I'm smelling that, I think, ugh, I definitely could not put that on my skin. Uniqueness, I would probably give a three and a half. I mean, again, I did pick up some similarities of profile with other fragrances, but there's definitely a unique bent to this fragrance and uh, it does bring something to the table that those others don't have. And performance wise, it's hard to say because uh, I didn't really pay much attention to it the one day that I put it on my skin. Um, in fact, it's not a fair, fair judgment because I think I did try and wash it off. So I think I'm just going to pass on the performance aspect, but this fragrance has been reviewed many, many times in Fragcom. So by all means, go check out the the review of somebody who actually likes and wears this one and they would probably give you a better indication of how well it performs all right so last but not least i have a little sample here of a la nuit by serge lutans this is one that i have been wanting to try for a very long time because my friend eve from eve spider smells uh, reviewed this ages ago on her channel and I ever since then have been dying to try it. I just haven't been able to source it where I am. So when I first got my little sample, thanks to my perfume fairy Chrissy, I sprayed it in the air and thought, that's lovely. I then sprayed it on a strip and thought, that's lovely. And then I put it on my skin and I almost gagged. For the first time since starting to learn a little bit more about perfumery and how to describe things, I think I have finally experienced the, the effect of indoles that turns people off white floral fragrances so much. You know, that halitosis kind of vibe that people talk about so much and which has always bewildered me because to me, all of the white florals I've ever smelled have all been so beautiful, even if they have had a slightly animalic bent to them. But this is something else entirely when this goes on my skin. So I'm not going to put this on my skin today, but I did make notes to describe it so that I wouldn't have to put it back on my skin to remind myself of what it smelled like. Because I know a lot of people describe the indolic jasmines as smelling like bad breath, but bad breath can still have a raft of different elements to it. So let's see if we can get a little bit closer to how I experienced this fragrance on my skin. So here we go. What did I say? I said, imagine a stagnant pond in a jungle in a humid climate that is a little bit muddy and murky and algae ridden. And then imagine the weather heating up until the humidity is about a thousand and the temperatures are causing your eyeballs to sweat. And then imagine the water in this little pond slowly evaporating. The bugs are buzzing and eventually the water just seeps into the hot, sticky, algae ridden mud. Maybe there's some dead crabs or something thrown in there as well. And they're all just adding to the stench of this muddy cesspool. A few meters away from this is a beautiful jasmine bush with some lovely, gorgeous smelling jasmine flowers on it. And they create a lovely scent in the air that just sort of wafts past. And now the beautiful airy jasmine notes are blending in with the stench of the stink hole that I just described. The beauty of the jasmine is definitely there, but it's marred by the tropical swamp monster halitosis. That's how I feel about this fragrance. <laughs> and I feel really bad saying that because I love most of the fragrances that come from Serge Lutans, but I have finally hit one that just did not gel with me at all and has made me realize what other people must be going through when they are forced to smell jasmine on my person. 
And I should caveat that by saying that if I just limit my smelling of this fragrance to the sillage without being tempted to lift my arm to my nose, I do get a really beautiful jasmine fragrance. But when I try to sniff this anywhere within a few centimeters of my skin where I have sprayed it, I, I feel like I'm getting bile rising in my stomach. So I think we can all conclude from that, that it's a definite no from me on this one. This one just did not work for me at all. So the rating, shall we, do we even bother? Yeah, yeah, we should, we should. Okay, so enjoyment, Ooh, there are elements that I enjoy, uh, but I really can't get that past that sort of halitosis vibe that it has. So it's a two, two out of five. Uniqueness, I think I'd maybe give it a 3.5 out of 5. I mean, at the end of the day, it's definitely a jasmine fragrance, which in principle, I like, except for that halitosis thing. But it is very much jasmine. So yeah, I think 3.5 out of 5. And then performance, uh, I'd give it a 4 out of 5, unfortunately, because after I sprayed it on my skin, I really regretted it and wished I could wash it off, but could not. So I had to suffer through it for most of the day. And that concludes my sample snippets for this week. I hope you enjoyed that. I am trying to do more sample snippets because as you know, I am trying to avoid too many bottle purchases going forward. So uh, even if I like something, I think I might just try and document it by reviewing it instead of trying to purchase a bottle. So if you enjoy this type of video, then do please give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.